Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my Apple Motion 5 Crash Course. In this tutorial, I want to teach you all about creating motion graphics for your video content, whether that's going to be for your YouTube videos or any other kind of video project that you may have in mind. So before we go ahead and get started, I just want to quickly mention that Apple Motion 5 was created to integrate with Final Cut Pro, giving you a lot more features and functions inside of Final Cut, which we will talk about more as we go on in the tutorial. However, you do not need to own Final Cut in order to use Motion. We can create a couple of projects inside of here that we can just simply export and then just go ahead and simply import that into any video editing software of your choice. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. So when you first open up Apple Motion, you're going to be presented with a screen in front of us. And what we've got inside of here are these five different startup templates. And what you choose inside of here is going to be dependent on the kind of content that you want to create. However, we'll talk more about this in just a moment. If we make our way over to the left hand side, we just got a few options here, such as if we select this blank option right there, this is how we access these five different startup templates. Then underneath that, we got our recents folder. This will probably be empty for most of you guys if you've never used Motion before. However, that is where you're going to find your recent projects after you created something. Underneath that, we've got a few options here for templates that we can just simply load into Motion and just double tap on these and edit them to change them. Me, I don't generally use templates. I like to create something from nothing, but you guys are free to go ahead and just have a little play around with these. Then underneath all of this are just generally projects that I've created over the time I've been using Motion. And once you save them, it'll just start adding them up here in different subfolders such as the generators and we've got the transitions as well as the titles and as you start creating more and more content in the future this will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and it just generally acts as a quick access menu to try and find anything you previously worked on that you may want to change so if we just go back up to the top again and we choose this blank section and we're just going to go ahead and start with one of these startup presets and for the beginning of this course I think we're going to create ourselves a title so we can just go ahead and choose that one. We are going to cover the rest of these as we go along in the video. So just bear with me for the time being. And we'll just focus on creating a title to start with. So once you've clicked on your Final Cut title, we're going to come over here to the right hand side where we've got our presets menu. And inside of here, we've got a whole different list of different screen sizes. And this is dependent on the kind of content that you want to create. For me, I always make 4K content so you guys have a better viewing experience on YouTube. So I'll just go ahead and choose that 4K. However, if you just want to make content for HD, then you've got them two choices there, which is 720p and 1080p. So that's down to you to choose the setting that you like. For me, I'm going to go with that 4K. Then underneath that, we've got our frame rate and we can change this to all different numbers. Usually for 4K, it would actually be 60 frames per second. So I'm going to choose that one. Then underneath that, we have our duration. This is going to be how long you want the clip to last. And we've got a few options inside of this drop down menu, changing from frames, time code or seconds. You can generally choose any of these that suits you. I like to work in seconds myself to make it simple. Then at this point, you just got to come up with a general number of what you want as a starting point. This really doesn't matter what you put in here as we can always edit it later on inside of motion and make it either shorter or longer. But at this point, it's just good to have a general idea of how long you think your clip will need to be. So if we just think about a title, I'm going to let it animate in for maybe around two seconds. And then I want it to be visible on the screen for a couple of seconds, then animate back out again. So the duration at six seconds may be a pretty good number for this. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it at that for now. But if we need to extend that time or shorten it later on, we'll do that in the project. So once you've selected everything that you've got here that you need, we're just going to simply go down to the bottom here and we're going to go ahead and hit that open. OK, so here we are inside of Apple Motion's interface. And before we get started creating any kind of content, we're just going to have a little look around the interface and get familiar with a few of the things that we need to know. So if we just make our way over to the left hand side at the top here, where we have this library section, this is what Motion referred to as a pane. So we've got our library pane right there. And next to that, we've got our inspector pane. However, you can call these panels or windows, however you like to refer to them, that is entirely up to you. But what we have inside of this library pane is a large selection of ready-made animations and effects that we can simply apply to any of our projects. 
And if you just take a quick look at this square or rectangle that we've got here on the top left hand side, this acts as a preview window to show us what these effects do. So if I just come down here now and I choose maybe one of these text effects such as that arrange in, if you pay attention to the preview window, you can see the animation. And that is what will happen if we apply that to any of our text. And if we go ahead and select a different one, you can see how they just behave in different ways. And to use these, it is just a simple case of just selecting and dragging that and dropping it on top of our text layer right there. So we're going to talk more about our library section as we go on in the video. However, for now, we're going to move on to the inspector, which is right here on the right hand side of the library. So inside of the inspector pane, we have four different options down here. We have our properties, our behaviors, our filters and object. At the moment, we don't have any parameters inside of here because we generally don't have anything selected. So if we go over here now to the right hand side, this is what we will call our project pane. And this is where our project will generally start to build up inside of layers and groups. And if any of you guys are familiar with using any kind of software like Photoshop or Affinity Designer or Photo or Illustrator, you're going to be very familiar how layers generally work and how you would use them in terms of moving one on top of the other, etc. But we will talk more about that as we go on. But just to quickly demonstrate, if we just select our text layer right here and we pay attention once again to the left hand side in the inspector, we can now see we have all the parameters available for the text. And inside of here, we can simply change the size of our text right there. As you can see, it's getting bigger and smaller. And most of the features you see inside of here are generally what you'd find in any text editing software, such as being able to change the font or the alignment options and the line spacing, etc. We also have a few additional options down inside of here. And we're going to go ahead and visit this more as we go along with the project. But for now, we're just going to move on and talk about a few of these other options. So filters and behaviors are going to ignore for now. And we're just going to go over and hit that properties menu right there. So inside of here is where you will generally spend most of your time. And this gives us access to move around these elements. However, we want to animate them. So if we just move this X and Y coordinates right there, you can generally see how it starts to move if you drag on your mouse. And you can just simply change the X as well to go from left to right. And this is generally how we're going to really pinpoint where we want these to sit. And as you can see, we've got additional options such as rotation. If you want to start to turn that around or if you want to scale that up or down. And we'll go ahead and talk more about these as we go on with the project. But for now, let's move on with the rest of the interface. So at the moment, we've talked about the library pane and the inspector pane. And of course, we've got our project pane just over here. Inside of the project pane, we have the layers that are currently on the project. However, as a starting point, you want to go ahead and just delete this group. So we've got a blank canvas that we can work with. So inside of the project as well, we've got these options up here, such as media and audio. And this is generally a way of just importing your different videos or your audio files to incorporate into any project that you may be making. So of course, if you already have a video that you want to bring in and edit and add titles to that, you can do that inside of Motion. You don't have to make titles and export them and bring them into another software. You can simply just import your own video into here and work strictly inside the motion and export it. So if we just go back to our layers, as this is where we're going to be most of the time, we'll now move on and talk about the rest of the interface. So next to our project pane, we have our canvas pane, which is generally a preview of the content we're going to be creating. So if we come up here, we can adjust the size here on the right hand side. If that's too big for you. If you want to make that a little bit smaller or bigger, whatever you find is easier to work with. For me, I like to go a little bit smaller, maybe around 50%, as it's always good to be able to see around the screen, as everything that is going to be in this dark gray area right there, you're not going to generally be able to see in the content once we export it. However, everything on the black will be visible on your screen. And as for the render option up here, we can just generally leave this the way it is. You don't need to mess around with that as a starting point. And with your view, just go ahead and leave these the way they are if you want to. You can put your rulers on and your grids if you want to work with them. That is entirely up to you. Then underneath that, we have our timing pane. And inside of here is where you're going to find all of your animation that we're going to put together. And it's easier to explain this as we go on and start creating some content. But you can generally see inside of here, we've got this playhead. And as we move that, you can see right above it here. This is going to be our timing in terms of how long or short the clip's going to be. 
and where you want to trim it and bring elements in and out. And once again, we'll talk about that as we go on with the project. So next to that, we've got a few options in here. If we were to go ahead and choose that show project duration, this is how we can change the length of our clip. We can just simply drag on that six to make it longer. So now that's become a 20 second clip. And once again, if you want to make it shorter, just drag that back down again to any number that you want. So I'm going to take that back to six. Then if we just move slightly above that, we've got all these options here where we've got some shape building options. If we go ahead and select that rectangle, we could go ahead and draw this over here on our canvas. And as you can see now in the project pane, we've got this rectangle that we just created and we've got all the parameters for this where we can just start to move things around and animate them. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because I generally don't need it at this point. Then if we come back down here and we move over to the Bezier tool, this kind of just acts like the pen tool that you'd find in any illustration software. So it's just a way of drawing your own custom shapes. Next to that, we have our paint stroke tool. And this is something you may not use a lot. We'll talk about that later on if we need it. So next to that one, we have our text tool. This, of course, is going to be one you use all the time when you're creating content. So we'll visit that as we go on with the video. Next to that, we have our masking tools. And we do have some additional sizes and shapes inside of here. But we can't access that until we've got something that we need to select. We'll talk more about that as we go on in the tutorial. So at the moment, I think we've covered everything that we need to know as of right now inside of the interface. And there are a few things on here that I haven't talked about yet, but we will talk about these as we go on. But for now, I just want to go ahead and start creating our very first project. OK, so before we go ahead and get started, there's just a couple of things that we need to do. So if we come back down here to where we got our six second clip that we just changed in this arrow down there, where we chose that show project duration, that once again is how we're going to make it shorter or longer. But what we need to do now is just go back to show current time. That way we're going to be able to see where we're at in the timeline as we adjust the playhead. This is going to be important when we come to bringing things in and out. So once you've gone ahead and put that back on show current time, just want to bring the playhead back to the start again so we can just start creating. Then what I want to go ahead and do next is I'm going to bring an image into my canvas here, something I can kind of use as a visual representation of maybe a video I'm working on, such as maybe a YouTube video. So if you want to go ahead and do that as well, all we've got to do is come up to our import button here on the top left hand side. And once you select the import button, that will take you to your hard drive where you can go ahead and search for any images that you may want to bring in. So if I tap on that right now and I select this image right here, I'm just going to go ahead and hit that import button and I'm just going to resize that to fit my canvas. And just like that. So you generally don't need to use an image if you don't want to. You are more than welcome just to go ahead and work with the black background. It's entirely up to you and how you like to work. So I'm just going to turn that back on for now. So if you have used an image, what you want to do next is go ahead and hit this padlock button right there. And what that will do is it will lock it into place so we can't move that around as we start creating. But quickly looking at this, I've gone a little bit over here on the right hand side. So I'm just going to unlock that quickly while I adjust that just to make it a bit easier when I come to create my content. I'm going to go ahead and lock that again. So now we've imported that in, you can see it's now in the project pane over here and it's also loaded it down here into the timing pane. So the way this generally works is what is going on up here in terms of layers and content that we have is going to be mirrored down here inside of the timing pane. And this is generally where we're going to start bringing parts in and out to animate them. And I'll explain that more in just a moment as we start creating this title. So the way I kind of vision this is going to be your typical YouTube introduction title where it's going to be in this bottom left hand corner. And it's going to be just generally over here where it introduces your name in your channel and maybe a few social media icons. So the first thing we generally need to do is draw this. So if we just go ahead and we're going to grab ourselves our shape down here. So if we go for that rectangle and we can just start to draw this any size that you want. So I'm going to have it roughly about that size. There's no right or wrong answer to this. It's all dependent on the size that you like. So once you've got that in place and you've decided that maybe it's too big or it's not quite long enough, if you want to go ahead and change that, just come down here to where we've got this little arrow key right there. And that is just called the transform tool. So if you select on that, we've now got all these little points around it where we can adjust it by dragging that. So you can simply pull that up and down and from left to right to resize that to anything you like. 
So somewhere around there is going to be perfectly fine. Alternatively, if we go over into our shape section over here, which is in our inspector, if we go onto the geometry section right there, we can go down here to where it says control points and convert to points. If we select that convert to points right there, that is now going to give us the option to hit that convert button and change these individual corners. So if we just go ahead and select one of these and we start to move that, you can generally see how that is starting to manipulate the shape a little bit. And this is kind of how you're going to get it a little bit more custom to what you may be going for. But for this particular title, I want to kind of leave it the way it was. So I'm just going to command Z to undo that and put it back to the way it originally was. And we can also go ahead and round our corners if we use that roundness button right there at the top and just move that slider. And as we drag that across, you can see it started to round the corners. So for me, I want to put that around maybe 25% and just tap off that so we can get a better view of that. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it on your screen. So that we've got some nice rounded corners there right now. And once again, if we select back on this and just go back over to the left hand side and choose properties inside of here, we have some additional options such as using the drop shadow. So if we just select that with that checkbox and we use that show button there and we select that one inside of here, we've got some more parameters that we can change in order to adjust the shadow, such as the opacity and the distance of the shadow. I kind of like the way this already looks as standard. So I think I'm going to leave that. However, you guys can mess around with these if you want to, as well as change the color. So if I just go ahead and tap on here now, so I can see what is going on in the background, I'm generally quite happy with that. So I think what I want to do next is maybe change the color of this shape just to kind of complement the video a little bit. So maybe have this blue as well. So if we just go ahead and go back to our shape at the top right there, and we change from geometry to style, Inside of here, you can now see that we have this fill color. And if we select that, that is how we can change the color of this shape. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try and sample one of these blues in the ocean. So to do that, I'm just going to grab that little eyedropper right there and just find a color that I want to use. So maybe a lighter blue, something like that. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to come off that just for a minute so I can have a look. And I'm quite happy with that. But I think if we add an outline on this as well, it's going to make it look even better. So I'm just going to select that once again, and this time we're going to turn on the outline and we can adjust the width for the outline right there just by moving that slider. And I think I'm going to have that around six. But once again, you guys can change the colors of this and change some of these settings it's entirely up to you. So if I just check back off that again, I'm quite happy with the way that looks. If anything, that's probably a little bit too big. So I'm actually going to go in and adjust this by grabbing that transform tool once again and just make that a little bit smaller somewhere around there I think is going to be better for me. So that is now the first part complete and I'm going to keep this quite basic just to make this video a bit quicker for you guys but obviously you can get a lot more creative than this if you want to. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a couple of text elements which one will be our name and the other one will be your YouTube channel for instance. And to do that we're just going to simply come down here and we're going to select our text tool and we're just going to select that text right there and it's just a case of tapping anywhere on here you like to type and just start filling anything in that you want to write. So for now, I'm just going to put in your name. Then I'm going to go ahead and make my way over to the left hand side like we did before. And I'm going to adjust that size to make that text bigger. So somewhere like 90 is looking pretty good to me. So once you've got that, if you want to move that into place, go ahead and grab your transform tool once again. And now we can just start moving that to wherever you want it to go. So of course you can go ahead and change the fonts and everything in there as well if you want. It's entirely up to you what you want to use. To be quick with this, I'm actually going to make a copy of this rather than going back down here and selecting the text tool again. So if we hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste, and now we can move this into place to where we want it to go. So there's two ways that we can do this. We could just drag our mouse down again like we did before to put that into position. Or alternatively, we can come back over to our properties section here and we can go ahead and use a position menu with our X and Y. This for me is always a better option because it's always going to keep it lined up with the text above it. So for those of you who don't know, the X is going to move you from left to right and your Y is going to move you up and down. So in this case, we want to move down from the text above it. So if we go over to our Y and we just pull down on these little triangles that we got there with our mouse, you can see it's now starting to pull it down. Alternatively, just go back up if you want to move it up. So now it's just a case of putting that into position. So anywhere around there will be perfectly fine. 
Of course, with this being a subtitle, it needs to be smaller than your name above. So if we go back over to our text section again, and we just adjust the size of our text just to make that a little bit more smaller and eye-pleasing, somewhere around 57 will be fine. We can now simply just go in here and just rename this to your YouTube channel, just like that. So what we can also do now like we did before is add a drop shadow. This time around with text, it's a little bit different. We just got to come over back to the left hand side and make sure we're still on the text section. And this time we've got to change from format to appearance. So if we tap that appearance button and we go down here, we've got that same option there with the drop shadow. So we just check that and that looks pretty good as standard for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and you can either select the text here or we can go over to the menu and we can select it inside of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that one as well and give that a drop shadow. And that is looking pretty good to me. So one thing I want to quickly note while I'm talking about the text, if we just tap back on any one of these, you will see if we go back to the format right there at the bottom here, it says editable in Final Cut Pro FCP. And you always want to have this little box checked. And what this generally means is when we come to bring this into Final Cut, we can always double tap on this inside the Final Cut and type in anything you like. So it always remains editable. So despite of what you write inside of Motion here, it can always be changed once you bring it into Final Cut. And I'll demonstrate that just as we go on in the video. Okay, so looking at this, I'm quite happy with the way it looks. I think this font kind of suits this kind of image. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. I think all I really need to bring in now is maybe a few social media icons just here and then we can just begin to animate this and kind of move on with the video. I know at this point it's kind of going on a little bit long but once you've got these basics in everything here on out after we've done this title will be really easy to do and quick. So hopefully this video isn't boring you at this point. So if we go ahead now and import our social media icons to use of our title just by going up to the top left hand side and choose that import button once again. Once we locate our images, we just got to select all these and bring them in. So I've got this Instagram, Facebook and Twitter icons right there. And I'm going to hold down command just to select all of these together and then go ahead and just hit that import button. And now they've been placed in our project pane. We can just go ahead and close each one of these groups that contain the icon. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select all three of these by holding down that command when I select them again. And I want to group all of these into one group. So to do that, I'm just going to right click now once we've highlighted all three of those and just choose that group option right there. And what this is going to allow me to do is just resize these as a whole rather than doing it individually so we can keep it all around the same size. So once we've done that and we selected our group, we're just going to hold down the shift on our keyboard just to lock them proportions. And I'm just going to drag that down to start resizing that to a more manageable size. And somewhere around there would be fine. So if you've got the size you're happy with and you start to drag it into place, so we put that somewhere around there will be okay. Now we can go back inside of the group in our project pane and we can just start moving these individually. So we can do that with a mouse like we said before where we just start dragging that over or we can go back to our properties and use our X and Y coordinates. So I'm just going to use the X on this one. I'm going to start moving that over to the right hand side. So I can just move that Twitter roughly into place. I'm going to put that roughly around there and I'll go ahead and do the same thing with that Facebook and just move that over. So you can get really precise with this if you want to in terms of your spacing. That's entirely up to you. I'm going to be a bit quicker and give this a rough location of where I feel they may look okay. So that'll do just to demonstrate. And now if we just go back to our group that we originally had, we can go ahead now and move that again as a whole, like I said, and just put that anywhere we want. I'm just going to move that with the mouse at this point just to make sure we hit that center line right there. So that looks pretty good at the moment. But what I actually want to do is I want to point out another really good feature that we have inside the Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to bring in a circle over here and we're going to put an image inside of that circle. So that could be an image of maybe your YouTube channel or your profile picture. And that will be another thing that will be editable inside the Final Cut Pro. And we can just simply change that every time we load the title in. So I'm going to demonstrate how we'll do that in just a moment. But first of all, I'm going to come back over to the project pane and I want to select both these two text files. So if we select the first one, hold down command and select the one underneath, then we just go to our properties and adjust that X. And we're just going to move that over just to make room for the circle that we're going to put in with a photo. So we can move these again in a minute if we need to, but I'm going to leave it there just for the moment. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go down to our shape building tools and we're going to grab that circle. If we go ahead and hold down that shift button, that will perfectly lock that to be a round circle. 
and get the rust size that we want. So somewhere around there will be okay. It's so gonna go ahead and grab that free transform tool and just move that into place. So somewhere around there will be okay. And if you feel that is a little bit too big, we can also come over here to the scale and just make that go a little bit smaller. And then we'll just go ahead and move that into place roughly where you wanna put it. So the idea of this circle is it's gonna become a source for a mask. And what I mean by that, if we come up now to where we've got add object at the top right here, and we just select this little drop down menu and we'll come down here and we're gonna choose this option here that says drop zone. So once you select that drop zone, we're gonna end up with this big rectangle in front of us. And what we need to do at this point is we've gotta come back over to the properties menu and we just wanna to go to that scale and we wanna make that a lot smaller. So we're gonna bring that down in size and what we need to generally do is kinda of keep it the same height that we got in this circle. So if we just drag this over the circle now and put it roughly around there, if you pay attention to these guides, that is generally telling me it's in the center of the circle at the moment. As you can see, it's a cross guide. So once you've got that into position, if we go back up to the scale again and we just zoom out a little bit again so we can make sure that it does fill the circle. So somewhere around there is gonna be perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to make this into a mask and we need to mask it to this circle. So in order to do that, we're gonna go on the drop zone and we're gonna right click on that. And then we're gonna come down to where it says add image mask. Then once we've done that, you can see now inside of this group that we've got, we've got this image mask option right there. So once you select this image mask, you've gotta come over here to where it says mask source. And all we need to generally do is drag this circle into that box. So if we just go ahead and pull that over and we just drop that in there, you can see now down here that has masked to that circle. And now that means we can drag images into this and we can do this inside of Motion or alternatively, we can do this in Final Cut Pro as well. And I'll demonstrate that when we come to import it into Final Cut. But just to show you how you would bring in an image on Motion with this kind of thing is we're gonna go back to our drop zone just up there. And we're gonna select the folder itself that says drop zone. And then you can see over here, it says drop zone again with the source media. And if we click on that two right there, cause we've only got a couple of images in here, I'm gonna go down to the bottom there where we're gonna choose that one, which is gonna be the same as we've got here in the background. But once we've got that, we can then just go ahead and move this into position. So if we just frame her inside of that circle and we can just imagine that be in the profile picture and that is all there is to it. At the moment that isn't sat perfectly in the circle. So I'm gonna move that over a little bit more and just come back off that. So now you can see that is perfectly round. So at this point we can click back on this drop zone, come back over to the properties and you can go ahead and give that a drop shadow if you like, just like we did before and just bring that distance out and have a little play around with that and just make your opacity a bit darker if you want to. I'm gonna turn the drop shadow off just for now, but the option is there if you want to do that. So moving on, this is nearly complete in terms of the design. What I do wanna do is bring this text a bit closer to the image and we're gonna bring these social media icons over a little bit. And I think we'll shrink this bar just a little bit as well, just to make it look a little bit better. So if we go ahead and select both of these text files again by holding down command, and we're just gonna move this X position like we did before just a bit closer to that image. So somewhere around there is gonna be fine. And then we can go ahead and grab the group of our social media icons and adjust that X as well, just bring them closer over here. So somewhere around there will be perfectly fine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select this rectangle now and we can go ahead and resize that as well by dragging that over. So somewhere around there is looking pretty good to me. So looking at this, I think it looks really good for a very quick design and just a demonstration. So what we're gonna do next is start animating this and we'll talk about how we use keyframes in order to do that. Now we've got our title complete in terms of the design. We can now see all of our files inside of our project pane have been mirrored down in our timing pane. And now we can use this to decide at what point or time things come in and off the screen. And the first way I'm gonna demonstrate that is if we just go ahead and we find something up here that we want to come on at a certain point, maybe your name right there, if we just find this down here, which is highlighted now in our timing pane, and we decide if we move this playhead that we want this to turn on around two seconds. So we found two seconds just here as we move the playhead, just like that. If we now decide this comes on at two seconds, all we gotta do is make sure we highlight the layer that we want to come on, and we're gonna hit that I button on your keyboard. So it's I for in. So if we hit that right now, you can see that this now turns on or becomes visible at two seconds. 
And it's the same principle with going out. We're going to use the O button on our keyboard. So if we just come over here now to maybe four seconds and we decide we want this to turn off again, we're just going to go ahead near that O button. And now you can see it's no longer visible after that four second mark. So if we bring this back to the start now, we actually hit the play button. And if we just pay attention to the graphic itself and we go ahead and hit that play button, you can see it will now come on. There you go, on and off again. So that is the basics of bringing elements in and out during your project. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo that by Command and Z just to get that back to how we started. And now we can talk about keyframes and how we get all this to move. So I do want to quickly note that these social media icons here I did find on the internet and I will link the website in the description for any of you guys who want to go ahead and find those. But moving on with the tutorial, let's go ahead and start animating this. So the first bit of advice I can give you, which I feel is going to be the most valuable, is always start off with your resting position. So what I mean by that is what point or seconds do you want this to be completely visible as this title is right now? So if I go ahead and I'm going to adjust this to maybe two seconds. So after two seconds of this being animated, I want this graphic to be completely visible as it is right now. So that is going to be my point right there where this will be resting. And what we've got to do next is tell motion that at this point, we want all of these to be in these positions. And we're going to do that by using keyframes. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our rectangle first. And now that's highlighted down here. You can also select these down here as well. Sometimes I find it easy just to select them up here instead and it will find it down there automatically for us. However, we will just go ahead and start off with that rectangle. So once we've got the rectangle selected, we're going to come back over to our properties. And you can see at the end of every single one of these options here, despite of whatever you choose, you have this little diamond right there. And what this little diamond means is it means add a keyframe. So all we got to do is move the playhead to anywhere we want it to be. So for us at the moment, I want this to be visible at two seconds. So I'm going to add my first keyframe on the position. So if I go ahead and hit that now, if we pay attention down here back in our timing pane, you can now see this red diamond that we've got, which indicates that we've got our keyframe right there. So being that fact that we just chose a position right there, that means that this is going to be perfectly locked to this X and Y coordinates that we've got right there. So if I now want to move this off the screen, I'm going to actually bring this all the way back to the beginning. And then we can just go ahead and create another key point. So we can do that by clicking on that ourselves, but we don't actually need to do this because the moment we try to change any of these numbers, Motion will actually do one automatically for us. So the way I want to animate this in, I think I'm just going to have it come in from the bottom and just make its way up. So if we go over to our Y position and we just adjust that down, we can just go ahead and drag that off the screen. So anywhere where we can't see it anymore will be perfectly fine. So somewhere like there. And now you can see right here, we've got our keyframe that motion automatically put in there for us. And this is the beauty of it all. It does all the work in between for us. So all we generally got to do is put our position right here for where our resting position will be. And generally from where we want it to animate from. And in this case, it's going to be off the screen. So if we go ahead and hit that play button now, we can generally see how this comes to work. Just like that. That is all very easy. So what we're going to do next is animate the next part that we want to use, which I think we're going to start with the social media icons. And I'm going to start off with that Instagram. So if I go ahead and select that one, and I think the way I'm going to have this animating is going to shoot over from the left hand side. So remember, this is going to be our resting position at two seconds. So this is where I want this to be visible. So first thing we're going to do is go back to our position and we're going to put in our first keyframe. And this is going to tell motion that at two seconds, it needs to be in this location. So if we go back over to the start again, and we can just go ahead and adjust this X position again now, just to take that all the way over to the left hand side till it's no longer visible on our screen. So anywhere around there. And as you can see, it's now created another point for us again automatically. So if we just go ahead and hit that play button again, you can generally see how this is coming together. And it really is as easy as that. So once again, back to our two second point, which is our resting point. We're going to choose our next graphic, which will be this Twitter. And I think I'm going to have this one coming from the top. So once again, we're going to hit that position button right there for our first keyframe. Bring that back to the beginning. And we're going to adjust our Y now just to take it off the screen up that way. 
and just keep moving that up until you can no longer see it. So anywhere around there, it'll be perfectly fine. So once again, once we hit that play button, we can generally see it's all coming together. So finally, with the Facebook, we're going to have that come in from the right hand side. So once again, choose that Facebook, hit that keyframe, and then we're going to move it back to the start. And then we're going to adjust this X position to take it over to the right. And just move that all the way over to this off the screen, just like that. And then that is animated exactly how I want to do it. So if we hit that play button, we can see it's all coming together and how easy was that. So what we're going to do next is we're now going to animate this image right there. So we're going to go ahead and we'll select that circle because we've got to remember, even though this is a drop zone that has been masked, we actually need to animate the circle as that is being referenced for the drop zone itself. So what we need to do is decide at what point we want this now to be visible. And I think I'm going to have that around that 230 mark. So if I come over here and I'm going to use a scale this time round. So if we go over and we put a keyframe on that scale at two and a half seconds, we can now just bring this back over to where I want it to animate from. And I'm going to have this from that two second point. So if I just go ahead and I'm going to scale this out so we can't see it. So I'm just going to pull that over to the left hand side, just like that. So it goes from zero. And now when we come to play this back, to tear back to the beginning, we can generally see how this has worked also. So just like that. And I think also at that two and a half second point is where we're going to animate this text. So if we go back to our two and a half right there, and we're just going to go ahead and find our text. We'll start with your name. And this is where we're now going to go into our library and we're going to talk about some of these behaviors that we got here. So behaviors are generally ready-made animations that we can apply to our text. So there's a fair few in here that you guys can go through and play around with. I'm going to be a bit quick here and just show you a quick demonstration of how you would use that but you feel free to take as much time with this as you like. So like I said before, we've got this little preview menu up there. So if we just go ahead and we choose one of these, just see how the text looks. That doesn't look too bad, just there where it's kind of got the highlighted text in the background in yellow. That's not really what I want to go for in this one. So I'm going to go for this breeze in, I think, see what that looks like. That doesn't look too bad. And you can notice that you've always got an in and an out. So it's always good to use the in when you bring the text in and use the other one when you want it to go out again. So in order to use these, we've just got to drag it on top of the one that we want it to apply to. So I'm going to take that breeze in and I'm going to drop it now on top of your name. And if we just go ahead and look down further in our timeline right here, you can see this is where our effect has been placed in this purple color right there. So one thing I did generally forget to do just then was decide when I want my text to come in and out. So with this, I generally want it to come on at two and a half seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this effect. So we're just going to drag that over to that two and a half second point right there. And then we're going to go ahead and find your name, which is going to be the first one that we're going to animate. And I'm going to hit that I button on my keyboard. So this is the point where the text will come in and then it will go out over here, I assume. But we'll work on that in just a moment. So as we just start and play this again, just from the start and just see how this works just like that. And of course, you can use the same effect on the bottom one if you want to. It's always best to go through all of these yourself rather than try and do them manually because it can take some time. You can get some really good effects if you do it manually and spend a bit of time on that. However, you'll find pretty much anything inside of here that you are already thinking of anyway. So just have a little play around with these. So in terms of this text underneath, we're going to go ahead and find another one. So you can see how that one looks. I quite like that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and be quick with this and just drop that one on your channel name. And once again, we just got to go ahead and move this into that same position. So that two and a half right there, and we'll have these come in at the same time. So once again, I've got to mark my in point here on that text, which will be with the I button. And now this is generally complete in terms of bringing this animation in. So if we take this off the screen and we just play it again from the beginning now, you can see there is our animation complete in terms of bringing it in. And then all we've got to do now is have it come back out again. So if we leave that on for that five seconds and we've got these remaining one second to bring it back out if you like. So at this point, I'm going to be a little bit quicker just to finish off this section with the titles. However, you can simply just go ahead and kind of do the same thing that we did here on the intro with the outro. Just have things going in and out whichever way you want them to go. But just to be quick at this point, I'm going to animate this as a whole. I'm just going to have the whole thing just come back off the screen. 
And in order to do that, the first thing I'm generally going to do is I'm going to close down this group there and I need to move this image outside of this group. So I'm just going to drag that and just try and move that outside of the group. So we can now see if I close that one, this will become independent by itself. And then what I generally want to do is I'm going to move that just underneath everything else, just around there. And I'm going to go ahead and close that one. It's always really good practice to name these. So you know exactly what it is that you're working with when you end up with hundreds of layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this background just like that. And now we're just left with the two groups that contain the title itself. So I'm going to go ahead now and select both of these. We're holding down command and I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to create a group of these two just by selecting that group button right there. And now I've done that, I can animate this group so I can move everything all together. So what we need to do now is just come over to our five seconds at the point we now want it to come off the screen. So we're going to go back up to our properties again, go over to our position. I'm going to mark that first keyframe, which is now applied to the group, as you can see up there. So if I just drag this over now to the end point, and all I'm going to do is simply adjust this Y position, just take the entire group off the screen. Uh, anywhere around there and then for me that is actually completely finished so if we just go ahead and play this now it'll just keep playing this on a loop so there is our first completed title and what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this into final cut and i can show you how you can edit all of this so first thing we need to do in order to bring it into final cut is we've got to go ahead and save it but before we go ahead and do that, there's one last thing that we've got to take care of, and that is to delete this background. So if we go back into our background layer right there and we unlock that so we can delete it and you just go ahead and select that group and just delete. And now we are left with that graphic. So if we just play that again, it will work as it normally should just about that image in the background. This now makes it transparent so we can put that on top of another video or image inside the final cut. So now we're ready to go ahead and save this. We're going to go up to our file menu in the top left hand corner. We're going to go down to save as and once you do that you've got this dial box right in front of us right here and all we're going to do is name this i'm just going to call this my demo just to be quick and inside of this we've got our category i've got mine as crash course for this video tutorial but you can come down here and create a new category if you like as well as you can do the same thing with the themes i'm just going to leave that as none so if you've got all this however you like it to be just go ahead and hit that publish button that is all there is to it is actually finished at this point all we've got to do now is open up final cut pro and i can show you how we can go and edit all of this so here we are inside the final cut and i've already loaded a couple of images in there that we're going to use just to demonstrate and be quicker so i've got this background image here of a city i'm just going to drag that in onto my timeline just make that a little bit longer and this is just really as a placeholder, maybe to serve as real content that we may put a title on. And this other image right here is going to be what we're going to replace inside of our circle. So now we've got this in our timeline. What we need to do is bring in our title that we just created. And the way we do that is come up here to the top left hand side. And we're going to go ahead and choose this show and hide titles in generators. Then inside of here, we just got to go ahead and find your category. For me, it was crash course. And that my demo right there is the one that we just created. So it's got to tap on that and just drag that above the background right there. And now as we begin to play this, we can see how it all comes together up here in our preview window. Just like that. And it all works exactly how we just created it. So first thing I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to make this background image bigger. So it fills this entire black area. So I'm going to do that just by adjusting the scale of this and just filling that up. And then once we go back to the beginning again, we can now see that it fills the entire screen with our title. Just like that. So at this point, if we just go ahead and we move this to where we know it's fully open, this is where we can go ahead and start changing things. So all we've got to do now is make sure that we select the title itself right there. Make sure that is highlighted with that yellow bar around it. And then we're going to make sure it's fully visible on our demo screen right here in the background. And all we've got to simply do is tap on any of these. So if we go in this text right now and we go over to the right hand side, you can see inside of here, we can actually change the name. So I can just generally put Matthew for my name and you can see it's updated down there as well. Same with the YouTube channel. I can come up here and I can just call this MJW Media Studios. And once again, that is updated down there as well. And you'll find as soon as we go ahead and reset this, it will actually load up with what I've just written, just like this. Now it has my name, as you can see, Matthew with MJW Media Studios. This will look a little bit blurry to begin with, as 
Final Cut tends to render in real time, so it looks blurry, but when you come to export this, it will be perfect. So moving on, what we can also do if we are on any of these text elements is we've got access to change the fonts in here if you want as well. So we've got all the same kind of formatting that we had inside of Motion. We can also change the size of the text if you want to make that bigger or smaller. Like I said, this does remain completely editable. So this is really good in terms of using the same title in different videos with writing different content in. We can also change the tracking, which is going to move the space in between the letters, as you can see. And we can also change the X and Y coordinates. So it remains fully editable inside the final cut once we created it inside of Motion. So now we've covered what we do with the text. I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and change this image and just double tap on that image till we've got this outside box here where we can see the image. Then all we've got to do is go over to the right hand side up to where we've got this little text box, change it to that one. And we've got this drop zone, no source. Once you select that no source right there, it's now going to find the image that we've got inside of here of this girl. Alternatively, you could choose that image if you wanted to, but we're going to go ahead and choose that girl. Then we just need to go over and apply clip. And now you can see it's moved her inside of that. But all we've got to generally do is double tap on this again and now just resize her to fit her more into that circle and just move her into place. So anywhere around there be fine as a quick example. And then that is it. It's all easy as that. So once we go ahead and we just play this over again, you can see how it's all updated now with a new picture as well as a different name and different YouTube channel. And you can generally do this every time you bring in the title. You can use a different image every time as well as different fonts and different names inside of your text content. So there is my tutorial on creating your very first title and learning your interface and various tools inside of Motion 5. So before we move on to the next section, I just want to also quickly show you how you can make this clip longer or shorter. So I'm just going to adjust this background just for a moment. And all we're going to simply do is just drag this to give it additional time. So you can see that it says plus one second and we can make that either longer or shorter. And what that will generally do is it will make the animation slower. So if I bring that back to the beginning again and we go ahead and play that, it's just going to bring it all in a little bit slower and back out again. So alternatively, we could do the exact same thing, but we can make it quicker just by simply shrinking that bar, bringing it all the way down to maybe there. And this will be really quick at this point. So just like that. So that's another added option that you have inside of Final Cut Pro. So in this next section now, we're going to look at creating generators. And I'm going to create a social media follow me title that has a couple of additional buttons where you can choose what kind of image you want displayed, meaning which kind of social media icon you want displayed at the time of when you are advertising your name. OK, so here we are once again inside of Motion Startup Templates. And this time around, we are going to choose a Final Cut Generator. So once you've decided what you want in terms of your preset and your frame rate and your duration, just go ahead and hit that Open button. So just to mention, despite of what you choose at the beginning in terms of your template, it's always going to look the same inside of the interface. The only general difference between choosing a generator or a title are going to be additional features and functions, which we will talk about. So hopefully at this point, we're going to be a bit quicker now because you've learned all the basics of what you need to know to get started in the first part of this video. So what we need to do right now is just import some files. So we can do that by right clicking in our project pane and hitting that import button right there. Or alternatively, you can do it in the top left hand corner. So I'm going to select these four images right there and just import those. Then what I'm going to do next is just resize this image here so I can just use that as my background placeholder as a visual representation like we did before. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. So what I need to do next is I need to put that outside of the group. So the background I'm going to move from outside of the group so we can just go ahead and delete that when we no longer need it later on. So I'm just going to shop both of them groups for the moment and I'm going to move the social icons on top of that one. And now we can go ahead and quickly start animating this. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I selected the entire group and not the individual pieces. And I'm going to resize this as a whole. So once again, if you hold down shift while you drag this down, it will lock that proportion for you. So I'm going to get that to the rough size. I'll be happy with somewhere around there is going to be fine. Then I'm going to use the guides just to center this in the middle of the screen, just like that and put it roughly where I want it. So somewhere around there will be fine. Then what I need to do next is just design the rest of what we need here. So just to be quick and easy, I'm just going to have a outline box with some text inside of that. So if we go down and we grab our rectangle shape, 
and we just draw it out to a rough size that we want. So something like that will be perfectly fine. Then what we're going to do next is go over to our inspector and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fill and I'm going to turn the outline on. So now we've just got the outline around the box and nothing inside of that. I'm also going to change the width just to make it a little bit bigger. Somewhere around five would be perfectly fine. Then I'm going to go ahead and just grab my arrow tool or transform tool and just make sure that is centered also and just move that into place. Then I'm going to grab my text tool and I'm just going to write in my social media just like that. And the next thing I want to do is just make that text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to adjust my size right there. And remember, it doesn't matter how big or small you make this because it will remain editable in Final Cut. So we can always go back and change that once we import it. So I'm just going to go down and grab that move tool again, the transform tool and just go ahead and center that with them lock guides right there. So I'm just going to see how that looks. That is not too bad at all. Maybe that text could be a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to adjust that quickly and just realign that once again. So that is looking better to me. And something I do want to quickly note is if you guys work in Photoshop or Affinity Photo and you save your project as a PSD file, you can actually import that PSD file into Motion and it will give you all the individual layers that you've already got inside of Photoshop or Affinity Photo. And this is what I do most of the time. I always like to design in either a photo or vector editing program and then I just import the PSD into Motion and then I'll just animate it from there. If you do want to learn a little bit more about that process, then I do actually have another YouTube video of where I created the title in Affinity Designer. Then I've gone ahead and imported it into Motion and animated it from there. So I'll link that in the top right hand corner now, as well as put it in the description for you guys. Okay, so moving on, we're going to go ahead and quickly start animating this. So if we just grab the group entirely rather than individual pieces, we're just going to make this a very quick and easy animation just to demonstrate how this will work. So first thing, we're going to go to the point of where we want it to be on the screen like we did before. So a resting position. And I'm going to go for about one second on this. I'm going to make it really quick. So somewhere around there. So what we want to do first is go to our properties like we did before and focus on our position and hit our first keyframe right there. So we can see it right there now in our timeline. And I'm going to move it slightly over to around 45, as you can see right here. And I'm just going to adjust my Y position to make this go up a little bit. So somewhere around 600, I think, right there. Then I'm going to drag the playhead all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to adjust that Y position down now to take it all the way off the screen. And this, in theory, is going to give it kind of a little bounce effect as it comes up. So if we go ahead and play that right now, you can see how that just worked. So at this point is when I want the box to come in as well as the text. So if we just open up the group quickly and I click on the box first and I'm going to mark my in point. And we're going to do that using the I button on the keyboard for in. Then what I want to think about doing next is animating this box. So we're going to go over to our library section and we're going to go down to our behaviors and we're going to look for shape. So once we select selected shape, I kind of like this right on effect that we have here at the bottom. And if you look in the preview window, you can see it just starts to draw in the shape. So if we go ahead and drag that on top of the rectangle, so it'll apply to that and we go ahead and restart this. And once we go and play this, we can see what's going on. It starts to draw the shape around the text. That's a little bit slow for what I'm going for. So I want to speed up that animation. So the way we're going to do that is simply just putting in and out point on the animation itself. So it starts off at one second. So by two seconds, I want this to be completely drawn out. So we just click on that right on right there and just hit that O button. So now we've got our in and our out point. So that'd be a lot quicker now in terms of animating that. So we'll play that once again. And that was a lot faster and definitely more what I'm going for. So at this point, we now need to bring in this text. So we're going to bring that back to the two second mark like we did before and mark our in point on the text. So if we go and find our text in our project pane and we just hit that I button. So we know this is now going to come on at two seconds and we're going to put an effect on the text also. So back in our library section on the left hand side, in our behaviors, we're going to go down to our text sequence and you can choose anything you like inside of here. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to be a bit quick now. I'm not too fussy. I'm just going to go ahead and choose this illusion in. And once again, we can see in the preview what it does up there. So once you've chose something you're happy with, just go ahead and drag it on top of your text file. And now we can see it down here in our timeline as it starts off with the text. So if we just go ahead and start this to the beginning again and we'll see how it all comes together. 
that is looking pretty good for me. So just to be quick and basic at this point, we're going to bring this back out as well. So I'm going to bring that over to the five second mark. And I'm going to focus on the entire group so we can move everything together. Once again, I'm going to go back to my inspector over to the properties and I'm going to mark my first position key point. So that is right there. And I'm going to bring this over slightly till we've got 15, 15. And I'm going to mark another position just by adjusting that Y up a little bit like we did before and bring that to that 600 like I did on the beginning of that. Then of course, drag this all the way to the end. And then once again, adjust that Y position just to take the entire thing off the screen. So our animation is actually complete. So once we start pressing play now, we can see how it all works. Just like that. So you'll find once we go into our group now, and if we just want to turn off any of these, it's all going to work individually, despite of which graphic you decide to turn on. But what we need to learn now is how we're going to be able to turn these on and off inside of Final Cut Pro. And the way this works is using a rig. So the first thing I want to do is actually turn all these back on. And then we are going to come up here to where it says add object in the center of the top bar. And once you check on that little down arrow there, we've got this option here that says rig. So go ahead and select that rig button. Then over on the left hand side, we have these three different options here. These all essentially do the same thing, just in different ways. It's whether you want to use a slider to change the effect or you want a checkbox to turn things on and off. Or what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to use this pop up, which gives us the option inside of here just to select different snapshots and we can add or remove as many of these as we like. And I'm just going to show you how these work in just a moment. So before we continue, what we need to do at this point is we're going to come up to the rig and where it says pop up underneath that, we're actually going to rename that by double tapping on that. And if you go ahead and just call that social icons or something and just go ahead and hit that enter button. And now we can see up here, it says social icons. This is going to be easier to find in just a moment when I show you this next step. So if we now come down to our logos that we've got here and we first select our Instagram, what we need to do at this point is we've got to come down and focus on the opacity. So if we come all the way over on the opacity to where we've got our keyframe button, we're going to go ahead and ignore that. So next to that on the right hand side, we've got this little drop down arrow. So once we select inside of this arrow, we've got a few options in here. And what we need to do is come down to where it says add to rig. So if we come in here and we go onto that rig underneath there, it says right here what we just created. So it says add to social icons and that's the one you want to use. So we go ahead and put that inside of there. Then we're going to do the exact same thing on these other two graphics. So over to Facebook, focus on the opacity, that little drop down menu, add to rig, and then just go ahead and add that to social as well. Same with the Twitter, all the same process on each one of these. And this doesn't matter how many images you've got, we can just add as many as you like. So once again, back to that. So what we need to do once we've done that is come back to our rig here and select that option. Then if we go over to the left hand side, you can now see that we've got Twitter, Facebook and Instagram opacity in here. And these are going to be what we adjust in terms of making graphics go on and off. So what we need to do first is come over to our snapshot section here with our drop down menu. And we'll go ahead and select that snapshot one first. And we're going to go ahead and rename that. So if we call this one Twitter, then we choose the second snapshot and then we rename that one to Facebook. And once again, just do the same thing to the third one and just rename that as Insta. So if you find that three isn't enough for you, or maybe that's too many, all you've got to generally do is use this plus or minus button here to add more snapshots as well as remove them. So now we've done this, we're going to go ahead and select our Twitter one first. And what we need to do is we've got to hit that start button right there. So once you hit that start button, you've got to get this little window pop up that says stop rig mode. So just ignore that just for a moment. Keep that on the screen. And what we need to do is we've got to adjust the opacity on these other two social icons to be 0%. So at the moment, because we're on the Twitter, we're going to leave the Twitter 100% and we're going to move the Facebook down to zero and we're going to move the Insta down to zero. And once we've done that, we want to go ahead and hit that stop rig edit mode. And that is all there is to it. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other snapshot. So if we go now down to Facebook, we go ahead and hit that start button. This time around, we're going to change the opacity to the Twitter to be 0% as well as the Insta to be 0%. Go ahead, hit that stop button again. And finally, on the last one, which is Insta, we'll do the exact same thing. Hit that start button, adjust the opacity on Twitter as well as on Facebook. Hit that stop button. 
And now what you'll see will happen here as we go and play this animation back and forth. You can see at the moment we've got this Instagram one just showing up. If we go back to our rig right now and we can go in here now and just change the snapshot. And there you go, it just changes the graphic for us. And this is going to be something that we're going to be able to do inside the final cut. So essentially what we've done here is we've generally created three different icons here that we've combined it into one. So you can just choose whichever one you want to use while you make your video. But before we go ahead and export this is an important step that we do need to take in order to get this to work in Final Cut. And what that is, is we've got to come back over now to the left hand side in our social icons that we've just created. And we've just got to come over to the far right hand side where we've got this little drop down menu like we did before. And down here at the bottom, it says publish. I need you just to hit that publish button as if you don't hit the publish button, it's not going to show up in Final Cut and you're not going to be able to adjust that. And also before we go and export that, I also want to show you that you can publish any other effects as well into Final Cut if you want to change things there too. Such as if we just drag this back over now and we can see this glow here on the text, which is in yellow, we can actually publish that color as well inside the Final Cut. So we can go ahead and change the color of it if you wanted to. So if you want to do that, we're just going to go over to our text like we did before. We're going to come over to our text on the end there in our properties. Then we're going to come here to where it says appearance. And in the appearance menu, you can see down here, we've got the glow color right there. So if you want to publish this as well inside the final cut, so you can change the color. Once again, just go down to that drop down menu and just go ahead and hit that publish button. Then once we go all the way up here and we select the project at the top, we can see a list of what's been published. So right here, we've got the social icons as well as we've got the color for the glow. And any one of these can be applied to be in the publish list if you want to be able to change it in Final Cut. So whether that's a drop shadow or the outline, anything you want, you can just go ahead and publish that. So with all that said, let's go ahead and export this now. So just like before, we need to get rid of this background because we no longer need it or want to export it. So now that is gone and we can just play the animation as normal and it all works as it should. So all we've got to do at this point now is make our way up to the file menu in the top left hand corner. Then we're going to go on to save as and this time it's going to come inside of the category generators rather than titles so go ahead and give this a name then of course go ahead and choose a category that you want this to go in or create a new one if you want to i'm just going to name this demo just to be quick then once you're ready just go ahead and hit that publish button and then that is all there is to it then once again back into final cut to see how all this comes together and just like before, all we got to do is just get rid of that title that we originally had. Go into our title option up here on the top left hand side. This time around, we're going to look at our generators. And there's a demo one that I just created. And here it is. So all we've got to do now is select that and drag it on top of the video or photo file that you have. And just go ahead and play that back. And you can see it works exactly as it did as we just designed it. Once again, it will look blurry because it is rendering in real time, but when you come to export it, it will be perfect. So now we've got this, we can look at editing it. So if we come over and we make sure we select that and highlight it, we can now come over to the right hand side where we've got all our options and things we could change, such as your text size and all the other things we talked about earlier. So if we now want to change the graphic in here, all we've actually got to do is come up to the top here and choose that show generator inspector. And inside of here, we've got the two options that we just published. So straight away, we've got the Twitter there, change that to Facebook. So as you can see, it works exactly as we wanted it to. We go ahead and hit that play button. Now we've got the Facebook graphic, or we can go ahead and change that to Instagram. And it works exactly how you expect it to. And once again, if you want to change that below, because we published that setting as well, it's got to wait for that to appear on the screen. So right there. And we can go ahead and change the color of that as well if you wanted to, to maybe green. So you can really see how good motion is in terms of using it alongside Final Cut. It definitely makes a great addition. I do recommend having them both, especially for the price point. It's around $50 or £50. And just another thing I want to mention, if you decide you want to bring in multiple versions of this and have different graphics, you can do, of course. In this one, we've got our Instagram. But if we go ahead and just drag another one back in over the timeline, this time round, this one can display your Twitter. So we've got the Instagram and the Twitter. Or you, of course, go ahead and change that to Facebook and just bring as many of these in as you like. So there is a quick introduction into using generators and why you may want to do this. So finally, we're just going to look at a couple more features as I want to wrap this video up at this point as we've gone over an hour now. And I imagine you guys are eager to stop the video. 
So at this point now, I just want to show you a few extra things that you may want to use if you're maybe creating a logo effect for an introduction video or something along them lines. If we go over to our library section once again, and we just look at our particle emitters, we just got some different things in here that we could apply as maybe some background effects into our video, such as this circle city here. If we just see in the preview window what that's doing up there, and if you decide you want to use that, just go ahead and drag it into your canvas. Then of course resize that to whatever size you like and then once you hit your play button you can see what that is generally doing so we could just have that in the background of our logo if you wanted to once again in terms of animation it's all the same kind of stuff over in your inspector just by changing your key points where your keyframes or where you want things to start and stop and of course with all these kind of effects we've got some additional options in here it's just a case of you guys having a little play around with all of these and just like the emitters inside of here with replicators, it's kind of the same thing in here. Just have different effects that we can drag in that do different kind of things. And it really is a case of you just going through this menu and seeing what you can find and that you can play around with. So I'm just going to delete that. Next, I want to talk about 3D text. So if we come down to our text menu down here and we just choose that 3D text right there. Once you just start typing anything out, we'll just put your logo. And once again, back to your inspector. Remember everything you need to do in terms of changing your colors and everything like that is inside of your inspector, inside of your appearance or in your properties or in your text. If you want to change the way that your format is as such as your fonts or anything else, your alignment. So let's just go ahead and make that a little bit bigger so you guys can see this on your screen and maybe make that a little bit big. I'm going to go for 400 and I'm just going to go over and drag that onto the middle of the screen. So at the moment, this is now a 3D graphic and if you want to start to change the way this looks or how the 3d is you just want to go back over to your appearance menu focus on the 3d text menu right here such as the depth we can go ahead and adjust that to change the depth of that if it doesn't go high enough for you simply just double tap on that and change that to any number you like and you've got all additional options inside of here such as changing the way your edge looks or the color or the matte or the shiny finish and of course, if you want to change the angle of that, just go back over to your properties. And then we're going to focus on the rotation section right there. And if we just adjust the Y, for instance, you can see how that moves and you can see more of it. And how you adjust it is going to be the way that your logo is going to look. It's entirely up to you how you like to do this. I'm going to put that back to zero as well as that one back to zero. And it's all the same that you've already learned. I'm just going to drag this all the way to the start. It's just a case of using keyframes. So if we decide at the beginning of your clip, you want it to be like this, you're going to add your first keyframe on your Y position. Then as it gets to the end, if you decide you want it to spin around a few times, then we can just simply go ahead and adjust that as many times as you like. So anywhere like that will be fine. Then once you go ahead and play that back, you can see it'll start to spin. So it's as simple as that. And of course you can do multiple things with this. We can also have this turn around the opposite direction if you want. So if we come back to the beginning and we put a keyframe on the X position and take that to the end as well. And you can do this on all of them. No matter what you're creating, you can add multiple keyframes. It doesn't matter how many you have or what kind of features they are doing. You can combine all of them together. So if we just move that around a few times as well, you can see now it's going to spin around at the same time. So play that back just like that. So it really is a case of just having a little play around with this and seeing what it is that you like. And also if you ever need to move any of these or delete them, you can just simply tap on it and delete it or you can tap on it and drag that into place to change the position. As well as if you come over here to the right hand side, we've got all these little diamonds right there. If you click on that one there, it says show and hide keyframe editor and you can see all your keyframes inside of there also. So I'm just gonna close that for a minute. So before I go ahead and wrap this up, I just want to mention a couple more things. So if you want to add lights and cameras, you can also do that. If you go up to the add object menu at the top there, we've got an option here where we can add a camera or we can add light sources. I'm not going to cover these at this point because it's going to extend the video by at least another 20 to 30 minutes. But if you add cameras, then you can just generally start off at the back and make its way around the front and animate that as well, as well as maybe zoom in and out or just make it go around your logo. Same as if you add light sources, you can have it coming from any direction to have certain parts of it darker than the others. And like I said, these are other videos that you may find on YouTube. If for any reason you'd like me to teach you that, then please let me know in the comment. 
and I'll make another video covering those subjects. And just something else I want to quickly mention, if you want to bring sound or audio into your project, then all we've got to simply do is go ahead and import an audio file. So just go ahead and find that on your hard drive. So I'll just grab that one right there. So straight away, you may think to yourself, where is the audio file? I've imported it, but I can't see it. Well, if you pay attention down here under your canvas, we can see it's this green file right there. But that's not how you're going to be able to see it in your project manager. If you want to see it over here, we're going to come up to where it says media. So once you click on that, you can now see your sound file is actually inside of here. And another thing you might be asking yourself is how are you going to edit that file to make it line up with your animation? So the way you're going to do that and be able to move it into place is come down here to the right hand side. And we just got this little menu button right there with the speaker. If you click on that, it says show and hide audio timeline. And now you can see your audio file is right here. So all we've got to generally do is just move that into position. And just like before, you can just mark your in and out points if you want to from where you want this to begin and end just by I and O. And it's as simple as that. I'm not going to play the audio because of copyright on YouTube, but you get the general idea of how you would use this with your clip. And finally, if you've now designed yourself a really good logo that you're happy with as an introduction or whatever you want to use it for, in order to export this now, we've got to actually export this as a video rather than any other kind of file. And that is generally just a case going up to the share button up here on the top right hand corner. And you're just going to choose whatever it is you want here, such as export your movie. And then you're going to get some additional options inside of here. If you go in your settings, what you generally do need to make sure that you have is that color channels. You want color plus alpha. And what that essentially will do is it will make you be able to remove the black background. So when you come to overlay this on top of another project in Final Cut, you'll only see the logo and not the black background behind it. Sometimes you may have to change the blend mode inside the Final Cut or any other video editing software that you are using. Just simply change that blend mode to alpha and then that should remove the background for you. But it really is just as simple as that when it comes to exporting. So there you have my crash course on Motion 5. I hope you found this useful and you've learned something new. If for any reason you guys want to buy some ready-made titles or generators, then please go ahead and look in my description area where I've got a link to my Gumtree page where I actually make these myself and you can buy them. And then it's just a case of you importing them into Final Cut yourself and then just changing the information like I've already showed you, such as the images or the text. I also include a video inside of any of those that you may buy just to show you how you would import them into Final Cut and how you will use them. So if you did like this video and you've learned something new, then please go ahead and hit that like button as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and check out all the other content I have available as well as all of my future releases. And if you know anybody who may benefit from learning this course, then please hit that share button as well. But for now, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Oh.